quantum computers can really revolutionize many of the things um, that we've been stuck on um, as a species, let's say, or as a, as a scientific endeavor, let's say, for the last um, 30, 40 years, right? Um, I think many of us in the field would agree that we don't expect quantum computers to replace our everyday computers that we have now, like, um, because our classical computers have been developed over 80 years now, and they work fantastic for many, many things. Like, you know, when you want to find the shortest distance on a map, how do I get to work every day? You know, your, your phone does that super fast. Why would you need a quantum computer for this, right? But there are some things at which, a, you know, a classical computer really struggles. And these are typically things that have to do with um, understanding properties of, you know, these uh, subatomic systems, basically. And you might ask, you know, why do I care about subatomic systems, right? Well, the reason why is because, you know, if you want to design better medical drugs, for example, if you want to make the, the process of producing fertilizer more efficient, that, that's a huge problem, by the way. Um, all of these things require your ability, or if you want to even design uh, advanced materials, let's say like uh, superconductors, um, superfluids, things like this, all of these you know, major leaps in knowledge will require a very deep understanding of what's happening in these subatomic particles, right? And classical computers are really bad at this, right? So um, they take, for example, if you want to understand, you know, really fully what a system of even, a, you know, 100 little particles is doing, technically speaking, you know, a classical computer would require more time than, you know, certainly my lifetime and perhaps even the age of the universe to compute this, right? If you want a really, a very exact computation. So here is where quantum computers have a hope to do something um, that is really new and uh, something that beyond the reach of classical computing because quantum computers are built themselves out of subatomic particles. And so in some sense, you know, they are much more suited to simulating and understanding the properties of other quantum systems. Quantum computing as a field, a big advantage and disadvantage of the field is that it's highly interdisciplinary. So the disadvantage, of course, means that you need to know a little bit of physics, a little bit of math, a little bit of computer science to get involved, and you also need much larger teams to make serious progress. Um, but of course, the advantage of this is that you're able to do things that you know previously isolated fields could not do alone. I really like the interplay between math and physics. Um, no matter what happens with quantum computers, um, you know, um, no matter what types of devices actually get built, a lot of the work we do actually says a lot about the world around us. There's something very unique that's happening now, which hasn't really happened in the last century, which is that um, it turns out that computer science has a lot to say about what's actually possible in the physical world, and vice versa as well. Physics constrains what is possible in the computing world. And, and this very tight interplay between the two, like this, this is something very beautiful that has only come about because of the field of quantum computing in some sense. And it is a very um, young field, relatively speaking, and it's very exciting. It's, it's really at, at the trying to understand the limits of what physics allows us to compute or not. And I find this really, really super exciting to be part of this, actually. So um, in that sense, uh, you know, it makes me want to get up every morning right, and to work on this.